almost 50 years ago, on the 27th of October 1967, the uh, medical termination of pregnancy bill, or the Abortion Act as we come to know it, was passed. And then six months later, on the 27th of April 1968, the law came into force. And for almost 50 years, there has been over or almost 9 million abortions in Britain every year, every single year in Scotland, there are approximately 12,000 abortions. One of the things that we in the pro-life movement can be proud of is the help that we give women. As we mentioned earlier, it's 50 years since the Abortion Act was passed. Well, next week it will be 20 years since what's become known as the Cardinal Winning Pro-Life Initiative started. Um, some of you will remember, it was 20 years ago, the 9th of March 1997, when Cardinal Winning stood up and said, any woman tempted to have an abortion, don't do it, come to us and we will help you. And for the last 20 years, we've been providing care right here in this city to thousands and thousands of women to help them to make the choice to have their baby. We care for the women and we care for the child. We care for the men involved, we care for the families involved. And that's something that the pro-life movement should be incredibly proud of. Not only that we care for the men and women and the children involved in abortion, but that we care for what abortion is doing to our society. Very, very quickly after starting working with Arch, I learned that so much of what happens in abortion is cruel, beyond, beyond cruel to women beyond cruel to women. And as a woman, and as a feminist, that makes me very angry. One of the things that struck me again straight away when I started working for Arch and has done ever since, is the shocking regularity with which I hear women say, nobody told me it would be like this. Nobody told me I would feel like this. Nobody told me. They're, they say, if I'd known, there was no one there to discuss it. Nobody sat me down and said, here are your options. I have to ask, who, if anyone, benefits from this lack of informed consent? So the second part is the consent part. And this is the thing that has shocked me the most and makes me the most angry when I hear constantly, in great contrast to what our, you know, the women and men over there are saying, I hear women constantly saying, it wasn't my choice. I had no choice. I felt as if I had no choice. I wanted to keep my baby, their words, and he made me have an abortion or my family forced me. I think that is beyond shocking. I would also finally like to say, if you do know anyone who's suffering after an abortion, and sadly there are thousands upon thousands, please ask them to get help. There is compassionate, non-judgmental, help available. No one should have to go through that horrendous trauma alone. They've suffered enough. I decided to take part last year in 40 Days for Life because I was so attracted to the cause. For me, it was a real opportunity to put words into action. This is a real cause that we have to care about. We have to do all the different things we can to make this a most attractive movement that people really feel they want to get on side and they want to make a difference. I want to just leave you with a couple of stories that were particularly poignant. And if you want, you have to have something in your head, something that drives you forward. And this was an experience that actually happened to my son, Sean. I hope he doesn't mind me using this. But Sean and his friends stood one day on the, the uh, prayer line and a car drove up, screeched up, and a big burly guy got out. And I think for a minute, minute, he was slightly intimidated about what was going to happen. And the man got out and said, do you want a cup of tea? <laughs> and he was completely taken aback. He said, what do you want a cup of tea? He said, well, listen, I'm really pleased you guys are here. He said, people should be here. People should have this voice, and you are a great witness. He said, look in the back of the car there. And there were two wee chicky boys in the back of the car waving and having a carry on. He said, my wife had a difficult pregnancy with both of them. And one was born at 22 weeks, one was born at 24. Abortion was offered to us. 
look in that window and tell me that that could have ever been the right choice. I'd like to just leave you with one parting uh, um, reflection and that was really on the final night um, when we were, there was a lot of anticipation. What would we do for this final night? What would be a fitting tribute? Um, and despite any big loud noise or any big loud scene, we felt that the most important thing to do was to finish 40 Days for Life in the same tone that we'd had all the way through. And that was by being serene, by being peaceful, by being quiet, by being thoughtful, by being prayerful, and in our own quiet way, lighting a candle and re in recognition of the babies who have lost their life over the 50 years and in the hope that those 40 days of prayer and fast and witness would make a difference to many people. So at that point, I realized the difficulty that women must face if they are faced with an unplanned pregnancy and how hard it must be for them. So when I had a couple of more children, I was approached to help with a volunteer pregnancy support uh, charity. And because of my belief in the right to life, because of my experience as a young parent of three children, realizing that it could be tough bringing up kids, especially if you were on your own, I decided to get involved with a crisis pregnancy care charity. This charity offered support to women through their pregnancy, sat down with them like Sister Rosanne has just explained, the sterling work that has been carried on to this day by the Cardinal Winning Pro-Life Initiative, and we would listen to women in difficulty and ask them what we could do to help, to help, to help. Whatever the problems were that the women were facing, we in the pro-life movement tried to find constructive and positive ways of offering support. This could have been helping young women to be tutored through their exams so that they didn't have to abort their baby. This could have been trying to provide accommodation for women who were wanting to choose to adopt, place their baby for adoption. There were a whole range of problems facing women and we in the pro-life movement always try to find a constructive and positive way in which to help. So 40 Days for Life is not a demonstration. Just want to make that point before I finish. 40 Days for Life is a peaceful, prayerful campaign during Lent so that we can establish a culture of life here in Scotland. A culture of life to overthrow the culture of death.